I find it hard to believe that out of everything related to TF2, maps are talked about the least. You got the weapon reviews, the class analysis, but not many people talk about the actual area in which you're playing. Out of all the aspects that makes a game a game, the location as to where you're playing is probably the most underrated. I mean, don't get me wrong, some games make their entire identity out of how amazing their location or scenery is, but outside of those outliers, most people don't really seem to care much. Where you are playing is important, and in a chaotic, varied FPS like TF2, maps are an integral component to how you play the game. TF2 has an entire smorgasbord of maps, and with this large assortment, there seems to be a preference for everybody. Whether you enjoy team-based gameplay, are going for huge killstreaks, or... Eh, hate yourself, TF2 will have a map that will cater to your needs, and today I'm going to be talking about what I deem to be the best of the best. Oh, but Zenith top 10s are a dead trend, tier lists are the way to shut the f shut up. Tier lists are stupid and, and dumb, and I hate literally everybody who does them. As Sun Tzu once said in The Art of War, tier lists blow, top 10s are the way to go. I'm Sun Tzu. But before we begin, let's go off with a trigger warning. Oh no, trigger warning, these are my opinions, and you will disagree. This isn't even speculation, I know you will, and not because I'm trying to be a contrarian, but because I genuinely feel this way, and I know most people don't. I've been known to have some pretty unpopular takes, and even as a 5,000 subscriber jabroni, yes, 5,000, please boost my ego, there are already people trying to poke holes in literally everything I say joke or not. Also, just another rule, this list is only for official maps that are listed under the official game mode section, so no Halloween maps, no Doomsday or Pastime, and no third-party community maps. Because, look, if we counted that, then we all know that the best map in the game is Intox Mario Kart. Come on, let's let's be real. Come on, let's, let's be real. Anyway, hope you enjoy. Uh, smash that sub button, let's get started! Not many maps in TF2 are held in high regard by the majority of the community. You would assume that if a map is one of the most played in the entire game, that there has to be a certain aspect that people must enjoy. Like how High Tower is pretty much a deathmatch arena and 2 Fort is. Uh, <laughs> recognizable. But there's one map that people have consistently praised for my time playing TF2, and it's one of the ones that I understand the least. Yeah, you can dislike the video now. <laughs> it's not like I'm gonna see it. Badwater is known around the community as one of, if not the best maps in all of Team Fortress 2. It's, it's gained a sort of status that this right here is the most fair and most fun map in the game. To the point where people make full length fucking documentaries about it. What do these dots indicate? Cause you'll notice they are quite unusually- Dude, there's reaching. And then there's this. Look, Badwater is a fine map, don't get me wrong. All the maps here are good. I just don't get why there's this much praise for a map that, at best, is a decent experience. To me, it's just the fact that every game is the exact damn same. There's always a sniper pixel peeking here. There's always a pocket soldier standing on the right side. There's always a sentry gun here because it's the meta. I can, I can do this for every single point. Every game of Badwater plays the exact same. First point is a rough push. Then second point, you either insta-lose because your team sucks, or you roll for the rest of the map because your team is just slightly better than the other team. Third point never gets defended, and then last. I hate this last. Badwater last is in contention for one of the worst last pushes in the entire game, with spawn right next to the point, places for pyros to camp and spam air blast, and these spots for engineers to make you their wranglers metaphorical bitch. In my time making TF2 videos, people have complained about sniper a lot, and I think a lot of it is because this last point right here. Because if there's a good sniper on defense, you can't do anything about it. You just have to ignore him and hope he misses when you inevitably uber push to kill the two sentries that are in fact in the same two damn spots every single time. And when you inevitably die because your medic baits you for the 15th time, you will feel pain like Walter White did in Breaking Bad Season 3, Episode 8. Oh, oh. Badwater is consistent, but I don't always want consistent. I want highs and lows, and Badwater almost never gives that. It's either normal or terrible. There's almost nothing that deviates from the norm. It, it is the norm. And with that being the case, most games end up either being a complete spawn camp or a roll to last where the defending team will camp because that's the strategy. I do like Badwater, don't get me wrong, but I would just rather play other maps instead. They call it Burnout, but I can't be bothered to have this be the only map I ever play. And since when I have this map on my list, I always get it, I've become sick of it. Sorry. When focusing on maps, you also need to take into account what game mode they are for, because the game mode a map is played on can sometimes hinder or facilitate the fun factor. There are incredible looking maps for garbage game modes and vice versa. This puts TF2 in an interesting spot. Unlike other games which focus stringently on a specific mode, TF2 has many varied modes that completely change how classes can be played and what the quote unquote meta is. There's modes like 5CP, which have been the competitive player's preferred way to play, King of the Hill, which is like a pseudo deathmatch style, and Attack Defend, where one team tries to capture points while the enemy team tries to stop them. And although some Simple, the attack defend game mode has actually become the one that I've played the most, which leads perfectly into this next one, Dust Bowl. Wait, what? Gorge. There's more maps than Dust Bowl? 
Huh? First off, let me start off with the fact that Gorge is so pretty. It's easily my favorite looking map in the entire game with that beautiful mountain on the side and that indoor area having a sky roof. The, the lighting, mwah, beautiful. Not many other maps can even rival how amazing Gorge looks and I'd be hard pressed to find a prettier map out there. Gameplay wise, Gorge feels fairly balanced too, making the first point push more favored towards offense while the defense gets a lot of power in the last push. Since the points are so separated, teleporters are almost a necessity if you're looking to hold the first point and same with offense on the second point. This allows for teleporters to become the most important piece of the game and the strategy more so relies on taking down the team's teleporter than destroying a sentry or, I mean, spawn camping. Okay, don't get me wrong, Gorge can fucking suck very easily. If the defending team is at least semi-competent and yours isn't, Gorge can end up being one of the most unfun experiences in the entire game. I won't lie and say that if I see a Gorge game getting spawn camp for over a minute, I hit that recue button quicker than 6-9 hits underage girls. But those balanced games, the ones that we all strive to have, those ones are always a great experience. On both offense and defense, you can take multiple routes to attack enemies, and especially on defense, you can take this right path that nobody ever looks at to completely destroy sometimes. Gorge Last does have a few issues though. This push is a bit ridiculous if the enemy team knows that a pyro has a mouse to bun, and the sniper sightlines are just slightly ridiculous, which reminds me of, uh, something. Of course, the last point has to be favored towards the defense, but this dropdown may just be a bit too much. There isn't really a good option to get down there or to the right side, which leads to people being able to camp there until an uber or a good sniper or spy make their way down. But honestly, since the game mode is attack defend, it really doesn't matter that much. Overall though, I think the looks and the general gameplay loop of Gorge can balance out these slight grievances. And honestly, I don't really care much about the downsides. It's just, it's just such a cool map, which leads into the desert has many lost treasures, the tomb of King Tut anime pictures and the worst Halloween map to ever fucking exist. And I just have to point this out, fuck Ghost Fort. It's the worst map in the entire game. The Morass's boss fight is not only annoying, but way too frequent and ruins the entire pacing. Jesus Christ, a round can last up to 15 minutes just because you have to fight this Rob the Awesome looking- <clears throat> Sorry, I went off the rails there a little bit. Um, It's Lakeside, number seven. I'll be real with you. On, on the first draft of the script, I didn't even have Lakeside on it. I completely forgot about it and thought it fit in with the mid cough maps. But once I played it again, I realized how much fun I was actually having. And I kept saying to myself, better than Gorge? Yeah, I kind of like it more. Better than Process? Yeah, I like it a lot better than that. Bad Water? Unlike its Halloween counterpart, which gives me a migraine just thinking about it, Lakeside doesn't have a fucking stupid gimmick. Why did I make that big in the script? What the hell? And when that's removed, the map is actually really great. Not only is the desert aesthetic nailed here, but it's a perfect example of having a balance between openness and closed off areas. King of the Hills is as close to a DM fest as you can get, making classes like Scout and Spy viable in a pub setting and heightening the strengths of classes like Demo Knight. Since there's only one point, that makes it the central hub of fighting, and the routes you can take to get to that hub are what I call the fun zones. You can get away with a lot playing Lakeside, and that's what I love so much about it. You can snipe from the rafters or the point if you're feeling ballsy. You can build in the groovy smoothie house. You can camp in the enemy team's little tunnel thanks to two health packs just being there. You can harass the default snipers sitting on the rafters. Hell, you can technically jump on top of one of these poles and wreck havoc for a little bit. Good luck, like, you know, actually doing that, but I mean, Lakeside is also home to some pretty funny spots that you can camp if you know what you're doing. This spot's actually fucking insane. There's a classic Uncle Shane engineering spot, and of course, the poles, baby! You can be on the pole! Honestly, Lakeside is a map that associates with dynamic, fast-paced gameplay, which is what I strive to have in every game of TF2, which King the Hill really promotes. However, as much as I like King the Hill, I can't say a lot of maps stand up for themselves. We have Nucleus, which is a spawn camping sniper's paradise. Ah! Ah! Badlands is just a smaller version of its 5 CP variant, but there's no spire for MGE mains to camp on. And honestly, the most fun part of Badlands is sneaking to the last point anyway. And then we got Kong King, which is the worst map in the entire fucking universe. Oh my god, I hate this map. Viaduct stands out as one of the good ones, though. It's a fairly small map with many enclosed spaces, and this makes it so the group fights are everywhere. It, it allows for pretty much the same thing as Lakeside, but since the map is relatively smaller than Lakeside, the fights end up being a lot more common. There really isn't much to say that wasn't said in this Lakeside portion. There are designated nesting grounds for engineers, great places for snipers to peek without being overbearing, and an amazing dynamic arena to jump around and shoot. There's a reason why in most MGE servers, Viaduct Mid is number one. Unless you just main Badlands Spire, which in uh, that case, um, your opinion doesn't matter. This inside house is pretty neat since you can just sit there and get some epic kills. And the map is designed to where you can reach spots that are absolutely insane. Alright, I'm gonna give y'all a freebie. Freebie sniper spot from Zenith. Epic sniper tutorial, Zenith. Alright, so you go over here. You go here. Here. Right here. This spot is nutty as hell, bro. Spies can't backstab you. You, you're like, you can get a good view of that and that. Oh man, and you're safe from the, from the default sniper peak. It's fire. Here's another freebie. You can actually jump on these, uh, these right here. And you can stand here. <laughs> this is nutty, dude. This is nutty. Another freebie. 
Another freebie. You can stand right here. And... This is pretty bad, but... King the Hill, again, is like a pseudo deathmatch mode, and Viaduct is one of the best at making it feel like one. Its avenues to push and defend points are so varied that it's crazy how fair the fights actually are. Even if Pyro Joe, the greatest player of all time, was on the other team, you still feel like you'd have a fighting chance. Now, unfortunately, since Pyro Joe is the greatest specimen to ever live, you won't have a fighting chance. But, you know, any other player, like Banny, yeah, that's fair game. One thing that sets Viaduct apart from its contemporaries is the pro map that's been created just for competitive play. This map creates new pathways to flank, makes the snow grass and generally optimizes the map for lower end pcs this map makes a good map even better and if you play on any community server product is probably going to be used instead of viaduct which uh, is i don't know pretty cool lois freaking freaking sweet lois hey hey peter holy crap Audio it's jungle. me peter griffin freaking sweet lois swift water is fun i'm saying swift water is pure fun i don't know why this map gets the rep that it does but playing swift water has always allowed for some of the most memorable and funny games i've ever played and the main reason for that is because nobody ever checks their fucking flank the first two points of swift water are so fun because if you can push through whatever defense and get behind you become the gnat on the enemy team constantly sniping or building level two sentries then when someone chases you you can just run away look you won't be useful doing this but it, well, you'll have a great time. I don't even know the strat for pushing or defending these points because every time I'm on offense or even defense, my main goal is to just get behind the enemy. Swiftwater is the Uncle Shane Engineer training ground. It is so easy to just get behind, place a teleporter, and run away with no regard for your team. What's up, guys? Welcome back to my tutorial. Today, we're going to be doing how to get behind the enemy team um, as the sniper player, the sniper class. Um, can I hit something, please? Uh, hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my tutorial on how to how to get behind Swift Water as the NG. Um, so first, what we need to do is get behind. So the next step. Um, oh fuck. So the next. No. Ah! So the next step, what you want to do is wait here. Okay, now that since the team's capped it, we go in here immediately, jump out this window, and you just run. You run for your fucking life, bro. And now we can be funny in the back line. I love pushing, or even better, not pushing these points. It, it actually feels rewarding to capture some of these since the defensive capability is super strong. You'll almost never roll on swift water, which makes it super fun to actually play. The map is set up in a way where nests are really strong, but there's also so many avenues to attack them to the point where it becomes an even playing field. If you actually coordinate with your team, which I know is it's a pub, you can maybe stand a chance at attacking some strong defenses. But with all that, unfortunately, we have to talk about the worst part. Swiftwater's last. Swiftwater last is pretty much as terrible, if not even worse, than the dreaded bad water. Oh, oh. This is the This is the objectively worst part of Swiftwater. All the funny flanks you could do previously become moot here because camping this top spot is just super easy. The difference though between bad water last and swiftwater last is that swiftwater isn't bland garbage. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, if you've gotten behind and set up in a way where you can basically spawn camp the enemy, then yeah, last is gonna be a breeze. But in 99 out of 100 games, you're gonna be struggling on offense here. Nonetheless, I still love this map, so, I mean... Uh, Look, I'd show more in engineering, but uh, I, I don't want to ruin my funny list, okay? You know, it would be worse. This map would be so much lower if I couldn't flank, all right? RCP is an interesting case to me. On one hand, you have maps like Fastlane and Freight, which since no human beings actually play, you get stuck on teams with literal children who are just as incompetent as my girlfriend trying to play Valorant. Hey guys, uh, my little brother is going to be playing, uh, so just be nice, all right? All right, now you, you got an out for being bad. Okay, you got So go, go, just, yeah, to your right? Yeah. Right. All right, now to your left. Yeah. Oh, you got you. Oh, there's someone to your right. There's someone behind you. Wait, ah, ah. wait I'm so confused. <laughs> your brother fucking retarded. Wait, I didn't even do anything. Walk forward, walk forward. Shoot, 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 shoot. You got it. Yeah. yeah. You suck. Suck. You suck. You suck. You suck. suck. Playing with or against these kids is frustrating enough. Uh, I mean, unless you're a TF2 YouTuber. But on the other hand, 5CP also holds some of the most competitively viable maps that are normally played by the best of the best, trying their absolute hardest to get a single kill off you. This makes queuing for 5CP more of a dice roll, and if you're going to have the UGC still players practicing their MGE skills in pubs, which as someone who has played comp and has had a very successful career, I can say that even I don't always enjoy these types of games. Rest assured, there's always that one map that I can go to for a good time, be it because the stalemates are actually fun to challenge, or just to, you know, Enjoy the view. Sunshine is the only map that I believe rivals Gorge for being the prettiest map in the game. The great landscape with the beautiful grass with pretty sounding callouts like Cafe, just make this map for me. I, I love pushing Cafe. Oh yes, can I get a double frappuccino large uh, with extra cream? Just like other maps like Process or Badlands, Sunshine is where all these stinky tryhards go, which sounds like a negative when some people say, but guys, improvement's a good thing. 
Don't let them brainwash you. What really stands out to me on Sunshine though is the second point. It's just a closed off pillar, but defending it feels so natural to me. I don't know man, it just feels so great when I get up there and shoot some enemies. Having the point be closed off to everyone feels like you can isolate yourself. I don't fucking know man, I'm not a psych major. Unlike most other 5 CP maps, the forward spawns aren't fucking insane, so you actually have a chance of capturing the points back if you get the chance. Also, this barrier on last takes just enough time for the enemy team to run around it to let you to cap, so they can't kill you from their spawn or anything, which is a thumbs up in my book. Hell, I love this map so much that when I was a stinky RGL open player, Sunshine was actually my favorite map to play. I, I loved pubbing on it so much, practicing my scout DM and then bottom fragging every time it actually mattered. Sunshine is my go-to map when I want to get my tryhard juices flowing with an atmosphere that also really screams vacation and eases the nerves whenever I begin to rage. It's not too hard for beginners to pick up, but it's definitely better than some of the other ones. From tryharding my metaphorical ass off to just memeing with the boys, Sunshine has been my go-to for years. Oh baby, here we go. It's time. Let's go! It's the YouTuber map! If you've seen any TF2 video ever, you've probably seen this map. It seems like every video that's made has to have Upward in it, and subsequently, it's one of the most played maps in the entire game. But that's honestly for good reason. It's not hard to find a good Upward match, and unlike most, you can pretty much find a strategy for any class on the team. Upward is just big enough to allow scouts to flank, but not big enough to get paragraphs why Sniper is actually overpowered. This map is beautiful, having some great scenery, and Payload is the perfect game mode for it. You feel like you're actually getting somewhere with Payload which, unlike other maps, is a nice detail to have. First point is very sniper heavy, I won't lie, but once you hit second and third, the game turns less into which overpowered class can insta-kill everyone in 0.2 seconds, but a pure test of skill to see who can push objectives and who has the biggest EP. Upward, like Badwater, is one of the most recognized maps in the entire game, but unlike Badwater... Hey, no, 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 stop, stop. It's not funny. It's just not funny. Stop it. But unlike Badwater, it doesn't make me want to kill myself every time I queue into it. Not only because it just looks better, but because the little houses, health packs, and the way you can play actually feels a lot more fluid. Ironically, playing Badwater feels like more of an uphill battle than playing the literal mountain map. Also, it is pretty funny. Can we play it? It is pretty funny. Last on Upward is regarded as one of the more fair last pushes, and although Engineer with the Wrangler can be a major nuisance and Sniper can sit here scoped in for the next century, the last is honestly relatively fair. Honestly, if you know the map enough and the other team doesn't, you can get a lot done without an Uber. Of course, defense has its perks too, the map is the default Engineer's Paradise for a reason, NG is nearly a necessity, but it's one of the times where you can live without him. Especially on points like last and second, NG isn't always a necessity if you have a good crits demo or a good crits soldier or a good crits a uh, heavy, or a flog pyro, or a, a, a sniper main, or, or a good spy. With that said, every single class has multiple roles that they can play, which makes the game feel much more dynamic than most other payload maps. Scout, for example, is normally the designated cart bitch, but on upward he can easily go forward and become one of the main damage dealers. Sniper is usually the overpowered 0.2 seconds class, but upward allows him to again flank and play aggressive. With all these strategies, it's not hard to tell why everybody and their mother plays this map, and as much of a contrarian as I am. I don't think I've ever not liked Upward, which is similar to... Out of all the maps in this game, not many of them have been able to leave a lasting impact on me and the way I played the game. When I would grind out trying to get better every single day and put on my favorite Kanye West playlist. But from the first time I queued into Harvest, I knew it would become one of my favorites. As much flack as this map gets from the community, I can't ever seem to find myself away from it. Sure, there are some insanely glaring, like, terrible flaws at this map that make some games really unfun for one team, but for whatever reason, it keeps putting me back in. And not like that bothers me though, I mean, this is my third favorite map. Harvest is, again, one of these smaller maps, but for whatever reason, it doesn't feel as small as it is. It's a symmetrical map with two buildings on the sides and one building where the point is, uh, with these little groovy smoothie shake shacks to the other side. And Harvest is my DM dreams come true. Since the point is separated by a building with a hole on top, you're not really incentivized to stay there and camp it, else the soldier main comes in and destroys you. No, instead, your main goal is to try your best to kill as many people as possible. This could be from going into the little hallway and trying to clear it out, going for insane kill streaks by any means necessary, or I mean, spawn camping. This type of gameplay loop is my absolute favorite. I don't care about the point. Hell, I don't even care if I win on this map. The point feels like an afterthought. People complain about the point on this map a lot, but I think if you're playing Harvest to camp the objective, then you're not playing it right. You will die doing this and ultimately get frustrated doing so. Instead, treat Harvest like a DM map and don't be afraid to spawn camp. I think spawn camping is the main goal of Harvest. Scout is ridiculously fun since you can abuse your movement mechanics, soldier makes getting to the other side of the map a breeze, and sniping at Harvest is the easiest way to get people as angry as a YouTube commentary on a video with an anime profile picture.
Also, anecdotally speaking, I got into TF2 the same time I got into around Porter Robinson, which if you don't know, is my favorite artist ever. And I have a really good memory of me learning how to play soldier, or demo, or scout, and playing some of my favorite songs today. So whenever I go into this map, it reminds me of those songs that I really enjoy. Just a little little anecdote. Maybe that's why I like it so much. Overall, Harvest is insanely fun. It's a great map to practice pure DM positioning, and best of all, allows you to completely ignore the point at all costs. Just don't play Angie on there. Fuck Harvest NGs. When TF2 was a brand new game, there wasn't much to say about it. It was a quaint, novel idea with nine brand new characters and a handful of maps. In the following years, it would grow into a lush community full of hundreds of items, hats, and most importantly for this video, maps. But here's the thing. TF2 could have honestly stopped during its inception. They could have ceased map development and went on to do bigger and better things right after launch. Why? Well, because they already peaked. Don't kill the telly. I'm camping it. No! Okay, Dust Bowl sucks. Objectively speaking, Dust Bowl is a disaster. It's a choke-filled clusterfuck filled with explosives. Demo Man and Soldier are way too good on it. Sniper is overpowered at points. Flock Pyro is a, a strategy that you can do. This map is objectively horrible. But hopefully at this point of the video, you realize that this isn't really an objective list. Oh wow, never would have guessed. The fucking Dust Bowl player would pick Dust Bowl as one of his favorites. <laughs> Dust Bowl is just so much fun fun. Everything about it is pure fun. From playing scout on defense to NG on offense to spamming crit stickies at the enemy team. Oh my god, everything about this map is just perfect. I just want to play it. Like, right now, like... Oh god. What's happening? No. No, I, I gotta finish. No, please. More like you're playing like, us. Weapon reskins in TF2 have always seemed like a strange case. You, you guys want to play Dust Bowl? Dust Bowl is one of the most hated maps in the entire game, but also has one of the most dedicated communities I've ever seen. Honestly, Dust Bowlers are on a different level. You can always tell who plays this map a lot because they know the meta spots to stand and they take advantage of every single situation. This map is incredible at consolidating players into specific areas, and if you're good enough at reading players or go into an unconventional spot, you are more likely to get away with pulling random shit due to most people being focused on the main areas. Getting good at playing Dust Bowl also translates really well to the rest of the game. Since Dust Bowl is a microcosm of explosives, heavy mains, and thousand hour NGs, once you get out of Dust Bowl, everything feels a lot easier. It's like that thing in Dragon Ball, you know, the, the thing, I, I haven't actually watched Dragon Ball, so I don't, I don't know what it's called, but you know, the white room where like he falls, he falls down and it's fun. <laughs> but unfortunately, even Dust Bowl has its downfalls. The crit screen can completely wipe players out and doing things like pre-firing air blasts is actually a really good strategy. Here's a tip, if you stand right here, um, you can just shoot pipes into the into their spawn door and um and the only real way to fight it is is like an uber this map sucks but to me dust Bowl's upsides tend to negate those downsides such as the crits creek is really fucking good yes i know i just said it was a bad thing but i i lied the crits creek is probably my favorite item in the entire game as hitting a crit no matter the class always gives me a rush unlike anything else and dust Bowl is a map where the crits creek is actually meta since people are so clumped together with a normal uber you sometimes can't be able to do everything you want with the ammo you have so instead you just shoot one sticky and <laughs> dust Bowl is insanely long too the rounds can last upwards of 20 minutes, which I know a lot of people hate, but honestly, it's my favorite part of the map. You can reach insane kill streaks and get a crazy endgame score due to this. I mean, you just get rolled, so timer doesn't matter. I know it's unpopular. I just love those long rounds, man. Even if it's a struggle, it's always just such a rush to play. Heightening the effectiveness of explosive classes makes it so that playing a hit scan class is much harder to do. Where a sniper can easily die when peeking once, a demo man can just fling a few stickies over wall and insta give everyone. This makes playing the explosive classes exhilarating, while the hit scan classes, bar heavy, so much more rewarding. Dust Bowl also lends itself to various different strategies and allows for every class in the game to be effective in some way. Scout, for example, is insanely good on maps one and two. But map three, he's almost completely useless unless you're trying to back cap because you're a, a pussy. This entails for people to be able to pick any class that they want to play as the map is surprisingly deep and allows for slight text that not many other maps have. Yes, I'm biased because Dust Bowl is without a doubt my most played map, but why do you think I put so much time into it? Other maps just don't allow for this kind of play. Maps like Process have rollouts, sure, and Badwater has that one jump. But Dust Bowl has so many avenues, so many ways to push, and so much counterplay with every point. Every game feels different, even if slightly. Dust Bowl is just pure fun, allowing for brainless sweeps and fair tryharding rage fests all in the same little enclosed area. And let me get this out there. Yes, there are some really stupid strategies, and yes, there is a group of cheaters who exclusively play Dust Bowl that are also 
uh, really easy to piss off. But Dustball as a map loses no points for me there. Yeah, pocket flogs cringe. So what? I'd rather deal with 10 pocket flogs than push fucking bad water last one more- You guys like attack defend? No? Well, me neither, so I'm not about to put fucking Egypt on here or anything. What I am putting on here is it's not going to be a popular choice by any means. Uh, trigger warning again if you just skip to the end. If you hate bad opinions, turn back now because this is a bad opinion. Okay, you ready? My number one favorite official TF2 map is... No, this isn't a meme. No, this isn't a joke. And no, I'm not that insane, but please hear me out. I, I think I have a point to be made. Five Gorge is Gorge, but doubled. It's a 5 CP map with the looks of Gorge and then halfway through it just gets uh, flipped. <laughs> now, now I know what you're thinking, Zenith, you're, you're an idiot. You don't like bad water because pushing last a nightmare, but but 5 Gorge? What, what is wrong with you? Look, look, let me look at my notes. All right, just give me a second. The drop down goes from being a, a nuisance to a, a cool second level with full health packs. That's pretty cool. Um... The, the forward spawns aren't, aren't that bad, except for the one at last. I guess that one's pretty uh, stupid. Um, uh, flanking is, is pretty... Alright, I'm gonna be real with you here. I don't love Five Gorge for anything it has. I don't think there's anything really special with it. Hell, technically speaking, some of the design choices they made are absolute shit. I don't love Five Gorge because of the terribly balanced forward spawns or the lack of defense being able to spawn camp at the beginning of a round, or the fact that I never get to queue for it nowadays. I love Five Gorge because it brings back a time to when I was new to TF2. It would be a random day during the summer, the, the late summer, like the dog days of them. You know, I'd wake up at noon with the AC blaring because I had nothing to do that day. And in that frostbite inducing room, I'd go on my computer that I got handed down to me and open up TF2, a game that I had maybe 50 hours in at the time. I'd queue for casual and just enjoy a game. Five Gorge was where I got my first five kill streak. Five Gorge was where I decided to main Scout, a, a class that I would decide to main for years to come. But you know, this was a time before I cared about getting good. A time before I gave a shit about game knowledge or aim. A time before I was even named Zenith. H hell, a time before I had any real responsibilities. All I had was school and I didn't even have to worry about it. It was a joke. I'd just go in, do whatever I was told and come home every day. And when I did get home, I'd probably open up TF2 for a bit. And it was a it was a great time, you know. I didn't have to worry about what I was majoring in or what college I was going to or what my future prospects are. I could just sit down and enjoy a game with other people. There were no bots to worry about. I didn't have any hats. I didn't feel like I had to prove anything to anyone. It was peaceful. This map is a vice, a time capsule, if you will, a place that will never change, even when TF2 does. I don't love Five Gorge for its visual style or the way it plays or how good certain classes are in it. I love Five Gorge because it reminds me of a time when I was just a kid, getting into a new game for the first time. And I didn't know at the time, but I'd meet some of my best friends and would make some of the best memories I would ever have. You can never update the game again. You can ruin unlocks. You can add maps that are completely broken, for all I care. But no matter what, Whenever I get that rare game of Five Gorge, I go right back to a time when TF2 was still a fresh new experience, and a time when nothing really mattered.